What's up guys, this is Kepfus, and in this video we are going to take a look at how I play World of Warcraft as someone who is visually impaired. So we're going to look at the different mods that I use, and we're also going to check out the software that I use to play the game with an Xbox One controller. Now this is something that I have done a few times before on this channel. In fact, the very first video that I ever made was showcasing my playstyle of the game and the mods that I used back then. That was back in 2011. I've made a few videos since then, but as time goes on, new mods come in, old mods die off, the game changes, and of course new viewers come to the channel and they like to ask questions about how I play the game. So this is a continued highly requested uh, feature that I do here on this channel and I like to abide and help people out from time to time. So that's what this is all about. Now I'm currently playing, running around with my Xbox One controller and I've been playing the game this way for almost the entirety of my time playing World of Warcraft. I tried playing with a keyboard and mouse uh, probably for the first maybe year or half a year and I just couldn't get it. It was just really hard for me to do. I think the main reason why is because even though I can type normally with a keyboard, like I can, you know, put my fingers on the home keys like everybody else, and I can type out essays or whatever, or Facebook, whatever I'm doing, no problems because I've learned to type and I don't have to look down. But when I'm playing WoW and I'm trying to move around with WASD and then I'm trying to hit spells, it's easier for me to get lost. And since I can't just glance down and reorient myself, it kind of became a problem over time so I could just never really get used to it plus I've been a console gamer most of my life and so I do prefer playing video games with a handheld controller and so when I discovered that I could do that and wow I jumped right on it and it completely revolutionized how I played the game and it just it helped the game stick for as long as it has so that's what we're going to take a look at and of course um there are other mods that I use, and we're going to take a look at those as well. But let's start with the controller. Uh, before I do get into this, I feel like I should explain. I am uh, visually impaired, as I said. My vision is 20 over 200 at least, and that's on a good day. And so I am extremely nearsighted. I'm sitting about 6 to 8 inches in front of a 32-inch TV screen to play this game. And even then, I still need some things. So it's a really big screen. I'm that close to it. I have to be. I also am blind in my left eye, and I have no peripheral vision, which means that when I'm looking kind of at the middle of the screen where all the action is, where my character is, I'm not seeing the minimap, I'm not seeing the chats menu, I'm not seeing the action bars, I'm not seeing my DPS meter, or anything else. And if I want to look up at my minimap, for example, then I am no longer seeing what's happening on screen where my character is. And I'm also really close to the microphone, so hello everybody. Yeah, okay, so um, that's what I have to do to kind of look around, and since I have no peripheral vision, it does make that very difficult. So a key part of all this is understanding how to set up a UI in a way that really helps me when I need it. And that's actually gotten a lot easier as time has gone on, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But the first thing I want to get into is the Xbox One controller setup, because I think that's what a lot of people came here for. Now, I want to say this, I was uh, messing around with a mod called Console Port there for a little while, and you probably saw some videos of that. Uh, I did like the mod, and it was fun for a little bit, but as time got on, I was noticing some things about it that I just couldn't really accept, and I couldn't just, you know, deal with, so I eventually uninstalled the mod. It is a really cool mod. You can check it out. It's really easy to set up. There's a lot of support out there for it. If you check out the mod, I will have a link in the description below to console port if you want to learn more information about that. It essentially turns World of Warcraft's interface into an interface very similar to Final Fantasy XIV's, which does have native controller support. So, Blizz, where are you at? Let's get on that. You know, that would be kind of awesome. But I use third-party controller support, and I use some programs to make it possible. So, uh, console support, like I said, it had some glaring problems uh, for me. Like, for example, the hotbar, whenever I would jump into a vehicle the hotbar wouldn't change and show off the vehicle's ability. So like if I jumped in that, you know, that light robot get up thingy out on Argus, I wasn't seeing the abilities that I could use. It just showed nothing. And so I don't know if there was a way to fix that. I could not figure it out. So I eventually, that was one thing. And then just, uh, you know, I've been playing the game for so long a certain way with my own personal controller set up that I just kind of wanted to go back to using that way. And that's kind of what I did. Now, 
console port is technically probably the easiest way to do this because it does have a program that maps the buttons for you as needed uh, with console port and so like I said you can do that if you want to but my method isn't too difficult as well it's just going to require a little bit more setup and probably I'm mean, definitely a little bit more cash so you do need to buy a program in order to do this the way I do now I use a program called Padstar which is Windows Windows 10's version of Pinnacle Game Profiler which is the program that I used to use before Windows 10 and they made a new program for Windows 10 and it's so much better than the old program so if you're using Windows 10 you can get Padstar there's a website for it I'll have a link in the description below to the website where you can get it if you're not using Windows 10 then you'll want to get Pinnacle Game Profiler another alternative is Xpatter uh, that's another controller mapping software that you can get and it works pretty well but it, and I think it might even be a little cheaper at least it was back in the day I'm not sure I haven't really looked into it too much but I use Padstar and I use an Xbox One controller now if you don't have an Xbox One maybe you have a PlayStation 4 maybe you have a Nintendo Switch you have a Nintendo Switch Pro Controller or the Joy-Cons a Wii U Pro Controller a Wii U probably the Nunchuck and and Wiimo you could probably even use I'm sure there's support for it out there but you're going to need to download extra drivers and possibly some extra button mapping um, uh, programs for you to use those non Xbox One controllers. Xbox One has native controller support because it's a Microsoft product, so it's the easiest to set up, and that's what I use. So, unfortunately, if you're looking for information about those other controllers, I can't really help you because I don't use those controllers, but you could easily search it on Google or look up even videos on YouTube. I'm sure there's plenty of guides out there on how to set up those other controllers. But other than that, once you've got your controller, hooked up to your computer it's ready to be used you download uh pad star you've got it set up this is what the setup looks like for me here i'm playing world of warcraft with an xbox one controller and this is basically how my controller is mapped out you can see the right joystick down here controls the mouse WASD is controlled by the left joystick, which is pretty straightforward. What's really nice about having those on the joystick is that when I press diagonal on the joystick, it presses both W and A or W and S. Or if I go backwards like this, then it's hitting both buttons, so it actually does move me diagonally. Whereas if I was doing it on a D-pad, it may not work so smoothly. So it does really well simulate as if I was playing the game with a joystick. And I can just kind of circle around and it works out pretty well. That's one of the biggest reasons why I like playing the game this way. As weird as that is, it's a small thing, but it does make a big difference. So I've got those set up. And then if you press left uh, stick down, you will hit tab, which lets me target enemies. And then right stick down is spacebar for jumping. And then if you look at the face buttons, one, two, three, and four on A, B, X, and Y. And then if you look down here on the D-pad, I've got F1, F2, F3, F4, and those four buttons all control hotbar buttons. So spells, basically, or hearthstones, or whatever it is I'm using. Um, and then if you look up here, obviously on the shoulder buttons, left bumper and right bumper are left mouse click and right mouse click. You can obviously also have buttons attached to um, select and start and even the Xbox home button the key though to remember if you uh, map a button to the Xbox home button is that if you hold the Xbox home button down too long it'll actually turn the controller off so make sure that if you do attach a button to this uh, that you only do a button that you're not holding down but something that you're just pressing quickly uh, it works just fine for that but if you hold it down it will turn it off also make sure you don't have steam on because you'll uh, sometimes send steam into big picture mode which can really screw things up if you're in the middle of a raid or something so so be careful with stuff like that but otherwise it works out pretty well now to get even more buttons if you look up here at the triggers which are up here this is a little symbol with a blue colored icon next to it and if I hold that down you can now see that there are even more buttons available now obviously the joystick still does mouse the left joystick still does WASD and the shoulder button still do the mouse presses. That's very important because those are probably the most important functions in the game at all times. So those don't change, but everything else changes to a different button. So now the face buttons do 5, 6, 7, 8 and the D-pad does F5, F6, F7, F8, which gives me even more spells. You've also got these buttons, which now access new aspects of the menu for me. 
And then if you look up here on right trigger, it's the same thing. It's a red shift key. When I hold that down, I get even more buttons. So now this is 9, 10, plus and minus, or equals and minus, or whatever. And then this is F9, F10, F11, F12, which gives me even more spells, even more interface options, and so on and so forth. Now, to get even more options, I can hold down left trigger, and then right trigger goes from red to green. So when I hold down right trigger, when I have left trigger held down, it gives me even more options as well. So I've got numpad 1, 2, 3, and 4, and numpad 5, 6, 7, and 8, even more interface options, and so on and so forth. And it does the exact same thing if I hold down right trigger first and then left trigger, I get even more options as well. And now I've got these to be the same because I don't want it to be too complicated, but technically if I did that, based on the order of when I hit the triggers, I could get even more options. You can map a button to be a shift key and that switches the entire controller over to different buttons if you want it to. So there's a lot of customization that you can do and allows for pretty much entire functionality with the Xbox One controller. The only thing I really can't do as well is obviously is type. So I still have my keyboard here for when I need to type and I do still use the mouse uh, for certain things. Like if I'm trying to click on something precisely, if I'm navigating the user interface like for auctions or bag management, that kind of thing, I still have the mouse there for convenience. But when I'm actually just out playing the game, doing quests, doing dungeons or whatever I'm doing, I play with this Xbox One controller and it works out pretty well for me. I've been playing this way for so long and it's really easy to set up. And of course, keep in mind, I will have links in the description to the programs that I'm mentioning. So I will have a link to Padstar. I will have a link to console port, even though I'm not really showcasing it here, but it'll be there for you to check out. Now, beyond that, that is how I play the game with the controller. But then there, of course, is the user interface, which is almost just as important, if not more important, than uh, the, just being able to play the controller. So the user interface is key to giving me all the information I need to play the game. When I first started playing the game, I was really worried that I wouldn't be able to continue because the first thing that I noticed was that the font was really tiny and it was really hard for me to see quest text or names or anything in the game and that really was hard i was really i was actually having headaches there for the first little while when i was playing because i was trying to read stuff and it was straining me so much i think that's why i don't really read quest text that much is because i've just kind of gotten apprehensive about straining my eyes too much um, but um i found mods and ever since then the game has changed for me and the game has become more and more accessible for me because of mod support so the first key mod that I use is one called LVUI, which you can access here. The reason why I like LVUI so much is because it basically covers your entire interface. You don't need to download different mods to manage different parts of your UI. Like I used to have Bartender for action bars. I had XPearl for unit frames. I had uh, different other mods for chat and different mods for all the different aspects of the game and now I can essentially manage all of that in one mod which is very convenient. Uh, it also increases font size and I can change the font face which is the first need I ever had for a mod. So it really does cover pretty much everything that you need. It'll even ping me whenever my name is mentioned in chat which is a really big help. So it really does help me out quite a bit. You can toggle, I can show you here, if you go to toggle anchors, you can see how it just allows me to customize all the different aspects of the UI, which I have set up the way I like. Now, I don't really need feel the need to go into every little piece of this and how I've set it up. You can download this mod. Unfortunately, you can't get it on Curse or on WoW Interface, but you can get it on the site for the mod specifically, I think it's like called Tuck UI or something, but I will have a link to that in the description below as well if you want to check out LVUI. LVUI is a pretty well known mod, it's a really popular one, so I don't think anybody here is going to be too surprised by it, but if you've never heard of it, this is it. Um, so, as you can see, it does manage every single little thing from my action bars to my chat menus. There are a couple of uh, functions I don't have use because I use specific mods for those. But in fact, if you don't like how LVUI manages certain things, you can actually turn them off. So you can turn off bars, you can turn off bags, you can turn off whatever you don't want the mod to manage and you can actually manage it yourself. Uh, one of the things I really like is there's this add-on for it called add-on skins. And when you go to that over here, you can 
there it is. You can see here that on the bottom right corner, I have the second chat bar assigned to SCADA. So SCADA is managed by LVUI through this chat window, which is really nice. You can even have it have two windows down here. Say if you have Omen or SCADA and Recount for whatever reason or whatever you're using, you can actually put those both in this window down here and keep it nice and tidy out of the way but there when you need to see it which is really nice and in fact one of my favorite things is when i'm not feeling social or i don't really care about my dps i can use a hotkey to turn them off and now they're gone and now i have even more beautiful screen to look at which is pretty nice so that's an option as well um, so that's essentially LVUI and why I use it. It's very helpful. It allows me to customize everything the way I need it, increasing sizes of things, increasing transparency, transparency, I should say, moving it to wherever I want on the screen as necessary. And another key part of all of this is learning what information is most important and what I need to see when I need to see it. So that's a big part as well. And if I don't need to see something as important, it's okay for me to look away from the middle of the screen and look at something like chat, for example. I used to have my chat screen was like covering half, like, my screen on the left side and I would have the huge font because I thought it was like I needed to see it at all times and I really don't. When I need to see chat I can look away from fighting and look down at chat and talk to people if I need to. Uh, same with DPS. It's there. It's not needed for me to see it at all times and I can even turn it off if I want to. So that's a big part of why I've kind of been able to minimize my user interface the way I have. It's a big help because I used to have a pretty cluttered up UI and I kind of hated it. So, so I uh, took the time to change it and I've come up with something that I feel is pretty comfortable. Another aspect of the UI that is important to note because I don't manage it with LVUI is my minimap. I actually use a mod called Chinchilla Minimap and I've used it forever. The reason why I use Chinchilla Minimap specifically as you can see here is the tracking dots because I'm able to have an option which makes it so that the resources which are the little yellow blips bubbles that show up when you're farming ore or herbs on the minimap are much larger. Without that, farming is extremely difficult for me. So it's literally the only reason why I use Chinchilla minimap. Uh, if you're someone out there who has a vision problem and you have a hard time farming because you're looking at the minimap, check out Chinchilla minimap. It will give you that option. I really wish that this is like a support that could be native to the game. Like I wish Blizzard would add it in the game so I can make the blips bigger without needing a mod for it because it is an essential part of my farming experience. It's also kind of keeping me to using this one mod, which, you know, props to the creators of Chinchilla Minimap for keeping it up to date and stuff, but whenever it isn't up to date, farming becomes extremely difficult. Um, there are a lot of other really cool Minimap mods out there. In fact, the LVUI one is pretty nice as well, but it doesn't have those uh, features in it as far as I know. So it's exactly the reason why I have to use Chinchilla Minimap. So without Chinchilla Minimap, farming is much more difficult. Now the other aspect of LVUI that I don't use is the bag part. LVUI's bag is nice. It's almost like Bagnon or One Bag where it just kind of bunches everything into one giant bag. But I'm not a big fan of that. I like to have organization. As a visually impaired person, I like my games like I like my real life. I like to keep things in their right place and that place never changes if something is out of place and i'm having to hunt it down i get easily stressed out because i have a hard time finding things as it is so i like the same thing in my game so i like to have a mod that properly organizes my bags for me which in this case is a mod called Addy Bags. What I like about Addy Bags is it has categories already set up. So I have a place for my cloth, I have a place for my Sargeras, uh, Primal Sargerite, I have a place for my gems, for jewel crafting, for my ore, and for all the different other items that I have in the game, even for my hearthstones. And since those are categorized and put in organization in their right places, I always know where to look when I open up my bag, so I'm never really hunting for anything. So it's really essential that I have a mod like this if I want to navigate through my bags quickly. Now another cool thing that this, this does is it stacks things into one little, little icon or window. So if I have say 200 stacks of ore, that's a max stack. 
But if I have two stacks of 200 ore, then it'll just show me one window saying 400 ore, which is really helpful because it's less information that I have to look through. Now, some people may not like that feature. I'm pretty sure you can turn it off, but I like it because it's less th like less information that I have to process visually. So obviously it does make things a lot easier when I'm trying to navigate my bags. Other than that though, pretty much all of my UI is managed through LVUI. Of course I use DBM like everybody else does. It helps you, it helps me the same way it helps you. It's even more essential probably for me, especially the audio cues, those are a big help. And other than that, obviously like mods like Handy Notes, you know, that kind of help me find things in the, in the world. I use those for a while because I get lost in this game easily. Even though I've been playing it for like 10 plus years now, it's pretty crazy. Uh, so having little mods like that obviously work. Of course, if you've been on my channel, you know I use Gnome Sequencer, which allows me to create more robust, more advanced macros, which kind of simplifies my rotation in, in the sense that it makes it easier for me to play because I don't have to press as many buttons. It's a big part of it for me because when I'm in the middle of combat, it's really hard for me to look down at my action bar and look at, you know, cooldowns and stuff like that. So having a mod like Gnome Sequencer where I can just spam fewer buttons, usually one button if possible, makes it a lot easier because I'm not having to manage cooldowns as much. Now it's obviously not the most efficient rotation, but it does work pretty well and I can do pretty decent DPS when I need to, and I can even tank. So having that is a big, big part of me being able to play a game like this. So. I'm really thankful for mods like that. The only other thing I can really think of besides Gnome Sequencer um, is obviously Dynamic Cam. And it's weird to think that a mod like this would be helpful, but it actually really is helpful. With Dynamic Cam, I'm going to have to go show this one off. So, when I'm fighting, as you can see, the camera kind of, I need to slow down my roll here, the camera kind of focuses on the target. So if I ever shift to a different target or if something targets me and I enter combat, the camera will shift for me, allowing me to focus my eyes on the proper direction, which doesn't seem like a very big deal, but for so long in this game, I've easily gotten lost, like not sure what I'm actually targeting. And this mod has completely uh, taken that problem out of the way for me. Like I, I don't deal with that anymore. But that's essentially a mod that has really helped out. I knew it would when I very first heard about Dynamic Cam. So as you can see here, I tabbed over to that other guy and the camera kind of shifts. Now for some people that might make things a little bit dizzying. But for me, it's actually kind of nice. And then uh, when you couple that in with a mod like Soundtrack, which allows me to uh, play music whenever I'm in combat, I'm never really caught off guard anymore, which is really nice. So, of course, when I'm finding normal monsters, it's usually not a big deal. But when I'm finding elites and rares, or if I'm in PvP, I rarely get caught off guard anymore. And so having little mods like that really help out my gameplay experience. So other than that, that's pretty much all there is to see. I'm sorry if this video was a little long-winded, and I apologize for stuttering. I just kind of went off script to just kind of show this off. Uh, I never really script anyways. But I hope that you guys did find some helpful information here. If you are visually impaired like me, don't be discouraged. If you have other, uh, you know, disabilities, um, but you can, you know, you can obviously, uh, you know, play other games. Don't be too discouraged because there is stuff out there to help you out. And you can really take the time to learn the games and learn what's out there. And I rarely find myself in a situation where... I'm not able to play a game and I like to try my best to play any game that I can and I am so thankful for the mods and for a company like Blizzard to allow modding and be lenient on using third party software like they are so that people like me can experience this game and have a good time. So other than that I want to thank everybody for watching this video. I hope you've all had a fantastic holiday and I hope that you will continue to watch for future videos as I play games like World of Warcraft and other games as a visually impaired person. If you enjoy this video, let me know by hitting that like button. And feel free to share it with your friends so they can enjoy it as well. You can also subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitter at TheKefis to be notified as soon as new videos are posted. Thanks for watching, have a wonderful day, this is Kefis, until next time.